This week's video is about software and it's software for the Fuji files because it feels as if it's turning into a Fuji channel. But what is I'm actually looking at is the Fuji files and how they're processed. And I'm looking at the comparisons for editing between Lightroom Classic and Capture One for Fujifilm. The reason I'm creating this video is for me, but it's basically, it's been inspired by one of my colleagues at F-Stoppers, Ivor Rackman, who did a fantastic article looking at different systems and software and just how the software handled different RAW files. And it was a great insight for me because I normally just look and use Lightroom Classic and that was it. That was everything that I normally use for editing my RAW files. I do use other software for uh, different edits and whatever I need. But in particular, when I saw the differences with Capture One and how it handled the XT5 files. I was actually really quite intrigued by this. So I downloaded Fujifilm, Capture One for Fujifilm. So that's the express version, not the full version. So this video is looking at that and how it handled a couple of images. This is Capture One Express for Fujifilm. This is a free downloadable one. It's the, the one that came with the camera. Uh, it gives you the link to it. And the layout and everything is exactly the same or near enough the same as Lightroom. So the familiarity with it is easy when you are moving around and editing your images. Now, there's a few things that are different and I've still to learn about them. But so far, I'm really enjoying using Capture One for editing the Fuji files as they seem to produce a better quality of image overall. They're not as soft as the original raw images that Lightroom produces. So the features within it so far for me have proven to be really good and we'll see how it goes from there. Lightroom has been my standard editing raw package since it first came out so I'm very familiar with how it works, its layout, how to adjust everything in it and I really do enjoy it, it's the go-to one for me so moving into Capture One it won't be just as familiar but I do notice that with the files, especially the Fuji files, they're not just as sharp and I don't know why that is but it just, it seems to come across that they're just not as sharp as the same files in Capture One Express. So I'm, I'm going to be looking at probably purchasing Capture One Express, the full version, to see what that can do. Because within Lightroom, I really enjoy being able to create the masks, especially for portraiture or the skies anything like that, I find it really, really handy and really useful and you get great results with it as well. At the moment, it just seems to be how Lightroom renders the Fuji files and their sharpness that seems to be a problem. I've still to find my way around Capture One. I'm just at the very, very early stages of it and this is another reason for this video. I'm finding it handles the X-T5 files brilliantly. But I would like to hear in the comments below your opinions on it. And perhaps there's a different software that you think I should try uh, to see how that handles the Fuji files as well. Iva has written other articles and looked at other software for handling them. So far, I'm sitting with Capture One uh, to do this and I am considering buying it because of the results that I'm getting with it but I'd love to hear what you think and what's your preferred software with that. For me I'm never giving up Lightroom uh, because I've spent too, invested too long in it just to push it to the side plus I like a lot of the things that Lightroom can do. Still to find my way around Capture One perhaps I can do them as well but I'm very comfortable with Lightroom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at this portrait image that I took and I took this with the 70 to 300 mil lens, the Fuji lens, and I'm going to look at the differences with this and let you see how it performed with these two images. On the left we have Lightroom Classic, the most up-to-date version, and on the right as you can see we have Capture One. Now I have played around with Capture One and I'm still finding my way around about it. I've been using Lightroom for so many years that I don't want to give it up anyway. 
So if I zoom this in to 100%, or it's 94, let me just take that to 100%. There we go. And I'm going to zoom this one into 100% as well. So straight away, even at this size, you can see the difference here in sharpness. Now to me, and colour as well, you can see there's more purple in here than there is here. I do like the desaturated look, and if I was continuing with Capture One, I would be desaturating the image anyway. But I'm looking at it from a detail point of view, and this to me, Capture One looks a lot sharper than Lightroom. And that's what I would like to know. I'm going to edit both of these images to just to a point where I'm quite happy with them. And most of the edits that I do uh, for Fuji files is in Lightroom because on the X-T5, although you can see the differences here, for the end result, what I'm getting, it's not too dissimilar. But I like a good starting point, and this Capture One seems to have a good starting point. And with this as well, I can go into, once I find it, edit with. So I could edit in here, then take it into Adobe Lightroom Classic and edit it in there as well, uh, because I like the masks. This is the Fuji Express version, so it doesn't have everything that the full Capture One version has. So what I'm going to do is edit both these images to a point that I'm happiest with them. See what the end result's like. Would love to know your comments, what software you use for editing your X-T5 files. Okay, so that's where I'm going to leave them for now, just so that you can see both of them on the screen. I'm not going to edit any further, and as you know, it was Acros that I used for both images. Now, I quite like the softness here within that as in tonal softness but I also really like the strength in this one and the contrast so there's more contrast down in this area and there's some sharpnesses in there as well I am leaning towards Capture One for this but at the same time I'm never going to leave Lightroom but I'm leaning towards Capture One and perhaps there's another software that you use that you could highly recommend. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it lets you see the differences between the Lightroom and Capture One when handling the X-T5 files. Uh, I understand also that it's on YouTube, so it's only going to be 1080p, so you may not see that much of a difference, but when you're looking at them on your editing screens, and it's the two BenQ monitors that I use for editing, uh, so when you're looking at them on the screens, you, I do see a massive difference within them. There seems to be, on Lightroom, when it handles the Fuji files, there seems to be a type of effect over it, as if it needs dehazed, basically, as if it needs dehazed. When you put it in Capture One, that's not there. Yes, there are colour differences, as you saw, especially with the portrait. There are colour differences, and also when editing the images, I'll tackle them slightly differently because of what the software can do. And that's the good thing about different software, you can tackle images completely differently. As I've mentioned quite a few times, I'd like to hear your opinions on your editing software for the X-T5 files. I'd really like to read into that and just see how everybody tackles their images and what's their preferred software for editing the Fuji files.
Yes, recently there's been a lot of review videos and I've still got more coming up. I've, as I mentioned, the small rig cage, that'll be probably next week now. I've also got the 30mm macro for Fuji and also another future video will be the 8016mm. 8016mm, I'll be back out in location for that one because I'm actually missing it being on location filming and then I'll get through a complete edit with that one as well. Plus give my opinions on the lens. Thanks again for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.